Welcome back to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us. Um, I think we're going to have a good half hour of discussion today. Everyone's in a really good mood and uh, talking about some issues around the state that I think are of uh, great interest and, uh, and uh, all around the block. I, for one, am happy that Scott Jensen is staying out of jail pending appeal. What do you guys think? I mean, he should be like Martha Stewart, just suck it up and get it over with is what I, that was kind of my thought, but. Well, he made a mistake, I think, uh, going to trial. I think he thought that he'd have a sympathetic jury and they'd say, well, he's just being picked on. All these politicians are all the same. They're corrupt. And uh, what he did is doesn't warrant a big felony conviction and a lot of jail time. And I think he played his cards and he, he lost. And now the judge has got to make some decision. How does he compare that? guilty verdict and the resulting sentence with Koala and the other folks. Sure. And I, I think the more time he can buy, probably the more the judge gets to think about it and maybe looks at the other trial records and seeing why Koala got what he got and uh, Fody got what he got and so on. Um, so yeah, while he probably pragmatically uh, get it on, let's get it over with. Um, he still would be one of the first ones who might end up in jail for the longest period of time, and he probably doesn't want that. There's a, a, been a point made that all of these legislators who have been convicted of various crimes relating to their professional or their, their public duties are still eligible for state pensions um, and will be receiving um, in the range of $1,700 to $2,000 a month uh, when they uh, reach the retirement age at which they'd be entitled to those pensions. Uh, and there's some thought, as I understand in the legislature, to do away with that so that if you are a legislator who is convicted of a crime related to your, your public duties, you would not be eligible for that pension. That may be a little bit knee-jerk, but that somehow seems fair to me. I, I, um, I mean, certainly at the, the national level, those Tom DeLay will continue receiving his pension, and which I think is substantially more than $1,700 yeah. a month. Um, but if you do wrong, and as it relates to know. your public duties. Well, I'm thinking about it being a teacher. So I teach for 30 years, and then I make a dumb mistake at, in my 31st year, whatever it is, with mm -hmm. a student or with embezzlement or something, and I get, I get uh, penalized for that. I get caught. I've had 30 years of pension. Uh, do I lose that? Yeah, I, I, and it is a it, it is you, a. You save your own contribution that you put in, but your employer-led contribution is yeah, taken out, which yeah. is the taxpayers. Yeah. I don't know. There might be a yeah. grounds for So that's probably worth some discussion. Uh, it does I, impact more than just the uh, the worker. It work. It impacts the family. Yeah. Um, if you have a spouse, for example, and, and what is a stay-at-home spouse for many years, and that person now is going to be out of any future uh, security because if that person who has been found guilty, like you might said, in the 36th year of their work, uh, loses all their pension, this happens to die of a heart attack, the surviving spouse now at age 70 is left without any mm -hmm. type of pension. And, and she mm -hmm. made a decision, in most cases, in this case it would be the wife, for example, um, is she supposed to be penalized for the rest of her life uh, for the decisions she made and the reliance she had on that money, that pension being there. So I think the repercussions are maybe greater than just that one person. Maybe there can be some type of accommodation, but oh. to maybe lose it totally when there is someone else's life and security and Mm. And, you know, and really benevolence toward that, toward that person, uh, that I'd, ought to be considered. I'd personally be more interested in real campaign finance reform legislation, <laughs> yes. which uh, yes. I think solves uh, uh, the problems that, uh, that all of these convictions are simply the, right. the manifestation of. Doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Our uh, legislature uh, ended its regular two-year session last month. Um, they actually uh, considered 1,997 bills and passed 487 of them compared to the last biennium, I'm sorry, not the last, but the biennium before that where they passed 109 bills. Now someone pointed out to me that uh, a lot of policy stuff used to go into budget bills and there's a little bit less of that going on now, but it's certainly a lively group there. They, uh, they're, uh, they've got a lot of things that, uh, that they bring forward. Um, what was not brought forward, or at least not passed, was comprehensive campaign finance reform. 
uh, or the bill that would have merged the election and ethics boards and maybe give them, given them uh, a little bit more power and independence than they currently have to do real investigations of alleged misdoing or, or wrongdoing uh, at the legislative level. There has been a call by some to bring the legislature back into special session. I did see that. Yeah. Um, uh, three uh, titans, uh, as it were, of the of the um, progressive part of the uh, uh, political spectrum: uh, Tony Earle, Ed Garvey, and E. Michael McCann, retiring um, uh, district attorney in, in Milwaukee County, have gotten together and and called for a special session. I think it's a great idea. I do too, and Common Cause surely does, mm -hmm. because a lot of time and energy went into that merger bill of, for the ethics board and the elections board. And one of the reasons for it is that uh, the present separate boards are proven to be ineffectual. So even though the law might be weak, they can't even operate under the weak law. Uh, you've got this particular elections board where it's half Democrats, half Republicans. When it comes to a decision, it's half Democrats one way, half Republicans the other way, and nothing gets done. And what, well, why do we have this board? Why do we have this review? Why do we have the law if the enforcement agent simply divides uh, based on partisan <coughs> politics? So it's time for a change. Uh, the governor supports it. Many legislators support it. It passed one house. Um, I think it's a great time for, uh, for us to do something. A special session would be great. So who's, and who calls the special session? The governor? Governor. Yes. And then he's got to set the agenda for the special session? Well, and the governor's not interested. Yeah. Uh, according to the um, article that I uh, have here in front of me, um, the, um, the governor is, uh, is uh, just not intending to do it. And um, uh, so it appears that it will not happen. Um, I see, that'll bring attention to the... Mm -hmm. That'll bring attention to his problem <laughs> with uh, campaign contributions and you're calling this. Uh, what do you want done, yeah. uh, Governor? I yeah. mean, uh, how do well, you, want, you know? It, Mark Green has got a big problem, too. I mean, let's not forget that one of the great issues that you could bring before the voters probably will not be discussed. And I think that's what Earl and Garvey and... Um, uh, McCann are talking about is because they both have their problems on this issue. I mean, Mark Green has got substantial problems with his Jack Abramoff contributions, and I don't think he's in any position to point the finger at Doyle. Mm -hmm. And Doyle has, I think it's a, I'm interested in your view, but I think the conviction of the, um, um, I'm sorry, and I can't even remember her name, I Thompson. apologize. Thompson. Thompson. Um, the uh, state uh, travel travel gate, as it were, uh, I think that does not bode well for the Doyle campaign. Um, yeah, so why call a special session on campaign financing and reform when you've got that facing it? You just play it down, don't, pick, don't raise feathers, don't call the session, and just deal with the problem uh, out there in the in the field uh, for the re-election. Oh, and I just think even on a more basic level, aside from all that, I mean, how do you how do you debate campaign finance reform when you're busy raising gobs and gobs of money this summer for the fall? <laughs> yeah, that's I true. I mean, yeah, you got to play by the rules that you have right now, but but I think it's just very difficult for both, especially for the governor, because he happens to be sitting in the chair right now, to be saying, this is so important, I'm calling a special session, and by the way, I'm still raising you know millions and millions of dollars every, every month. Or legislators. I mean, most of the uh, yeah. Senate races that are contested, yep. those would be a million dollar per candidate races, and they're going to be raising all kinds of money that would probably quite contrary to what the bill's language would be. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so that's a good what are they going to do? <laughs> so they're going to minimize any conflict between what they're doing and what they're voting on. So I don't see any, I think the governor and anybody who's involved in the, the present campaign is probably not going to be very objective in looking at this yeah, whole thing. Right. The only good that might come out of this is it's going to be raised by the news media, hopefully, uh, at every debate between Green and Doyle and so on. What is it that you will sign? What, it is it, what is it you do support? And to get them on record repeatedly so that when the re legislature reconvenes in January and whoever is governor is, is pretty well on record about what they should be doing as the new governor or the, or the re-elected governor. That it's doesn't a, seem to make much difference when... <laughs> Well, I think in I mean, many cases our society has not held politicians' feet to the fire on this issue. They have not? No. no. I mean, and I think the news media is as much to blame as any. They maybe do a few 
uh, editorials when Common Cause rings or shakes their cage, you know, and but maybe they, they ought to be up front a little more. Some of it is due to conflict of interest, of course. Uh, yes. The, the media gets big bucks. Uh, exactly. And so it's about time they do some soul searching as well. Mm -hmm. But you know, it really is tough for Doyle to say I'm, I'm, for, I'm for all this and this, but I'm not going to call a special session. And then secondly, you know, who's going to really pay attention in the summer? Well, I think you know, everybody, everybody's busy I, I, having I, I lives in the Jim summer. I know Jim Doyle quite well, and, and I think uh, I've talked to him a lot about this issue, and basically he says, I know what I want, and they're not going to give it to me by they, the Republican legislature. Oh, and great. So, you got something to campaign on then. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's maybe what his intent is. Uh, I don't know how he's going to raise it, how he's going to couch it out there, but basically he said that, you know, I wouldn't get what I think we really need in this state, and I don't want to third of a loaf, maybe, when we ought to be doing this. So that's his mm -hmm. deep inside thinking on the issue. Well, and the plain fact is, and I really like Jim Doyle, and I have a lot of respect for him, and I think he has been a fine governor, and, um, and the campaign will be interesting just in terms of how those issues get played out. But he's as good as Tommy Thompson was at raising money. And it's not a pleasant process. It is a process of, as far as I can see, it appears to be a process of influence. And what will your money get you? And sure. it's certainly not Doyle alone, but um, he's gotten very, very good at it. And we've talked about the millions and millions of dollars, or as Mr. Risto said, the gobs, I like that, the gobs of money that, that will need to be raised in order to finance this the selection and its money wasted, in my view, because so little of what is purchased assists voters truly in analyzing the positions of the candidates and making rational, informed decisions about how they want to vote. But I, I, I mean, should, Doyle is, I, I, he's out Tommy and Tommy. They should call a special session on how to keep businesses in the state. Mm -hmm. Change the tax laws, change the regulatory laws, and because we just have this big, uh, uh, this software company, I don't remember the Redwood, red. where it is. What, yeah, it's talking about moving out of the state. Uh, they employ, I don't know how many people, 900 Two, people. I thought 200, was, I thought in the, 200 in the Wisconsin. state, 900 all over. But they, they're in Waukesha area, right. I think, and they're talking about leaving the state. Which is, I mean, because Wisconsin because actually has one of the lowest corporate business. income tax rates in the nation. That whole tax burden has been passed on to individuals. Maybe it's their individual employees who are paying they higher taxes. Like taxes sure. Yeah, I mean Wisconsin is well, well in the bottom quartile, isn't it, uh, Cal? In terms yeah. of, of corporate income tax rates. That's not what I hear. I mean, of course not. Why? You know. Sure. I, I mean, you're the the, yeah. the, the the regulatory kinds of things and the, the supreme most recent Supreme Court decision on. Which one? Uh, it had to do with regulation, but I'm trying to think of. A, mm. It made the Wall Street Journal. I can't think of a. I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Mm. I thought well, it was the malpractice caps that that was going to bring maybe, down yeah, the uh, Wisconsin but, economy. But well, the, okay. news, the news media this week has, has been filled with articles on uh, businesses now leaving China and yes. going to India because India is the new low <laughs> wage champion. Well, I'm not so sure Wisconsin can compete with uh, with it's, that scenario. Yeah. It was, yeah. No matter okay. what we do. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting, and that, of course, is a topic for a show beyond our meager abilities here, right. modest abilities, but um, it, it does lead to um, the, Tommy Thompson came, he saw, and he left, it would appear. <laughs> um, there's not much uh, coming to us in the way of um, not running against oil, not running against coal. Some of us here think that if he had run against oil, he might have beat him. I don't know, can you come home again? I. I Cal, you said you didn't think that uh, Tommy could be Cole, and I would... Well, I think he'd have a tough time, and I, I, I just wonder whether Tommy Thompson wants to go back to Washington, D.C. Um, it apparently was sort of a difficult decision, the way he portrayed it, to leave the state in the first place, to go to Washington, and then said he was only going to serve one term and come back. Well, he has come back, and I'm sure he's doing quite well in the private sure, sector. Sure. So does he want to, for a certain limited, probably small, much smaller salary, go back to Washington, D.C.? I'm not so sure that that's what he's desiring to do. 
you know, he still has his friends and his contacts sure. and his influence without being in the running for office. Sure. <laughs> yeah, right. So. Well, and let's all remember that Bill Clinton made eight million dollars in right. two thousand five. <laughs> right. So there, uh, there is life. Uh, you there is paid life. His legal bills by now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Barely. There's Barely. no better place to spend your money, in, 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 yeah, in, in my humble profession. opinion. So let's earn well, on a. Point of view. a <laughs> <laughs> But then again, that wasn't in the Sheboygan Press. So, uh, well, I think um, any early thoughts on the Doyle Green election? And um, actually, in the article that I was reading about um, uh, Tony Earle, Ed Garvey, and E. Michael McCann um, uh, mourning the loss of any kind of meaningful campaign finance reform, um, the um, uh, one of the options might be a, is drafting a reform candidate to run against either Doyle or Green. This, these folks are going to be working with the people's, I'm sorry, the people's legislature, which is part of the Wisconsin democracy campaign. Um, Doyle, Green, and E. Michael McCann, or do we get a third party candidate? We've talked about a, the system just doesn't seem to handle third party candidates, but. I don't think the people do. I mean, people talk about how they, don't like politicians, but when they're given a choice for, of a third candidate, uh, I guess because their fathers and mothers and grandmothers, all fathers voted Democrat or Republican, that's the way they vote. I mean, mm -hmm. look at the, the Ralph Nader quest, you know, and well, look go way down to George Wallace or who Anderson, whoever you want to pick, mm -hmm. never really did real well. And it's America is not quite ready for the third and fourth parties to be viable parties. Even though people complain about it, uh, they just don't vote that way. They really don't. No. Um, and we've had some third party spoilers, but it's, uh, but that's about, yeah. that's just about it. Um, what do you think the issues are going to be? Um, the, the legislature with Doyle has brought in a balanced budget in the last, uh, in the last, in both biennium, I think. Well, you're the two state referenda will be discussed. I think, I, I still think the, that's what the issue is now they're talking about the tax climate in the state uh, puts Wisconsin up there for retaining businesses. They'll, they'll bring that in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's three, I don't know. Uh, there'll be others. Well, certain corruption in government. Uh, but again, that, that, that'll apply to everybody, but right. that'll go, that'll go Republican and Democrat. Yeah. I think neither party has a cutting edge campaign issue on money or corruption because it just seems to be equally spread across the board. This is going to be ugly. It's for that reason. You don't, neither, neither party is going to be able to really lay out a vision of where they want to take Wisconsin that's going to be really compelling, whether it be the governor's record or whether it be Green's. I know Green was trying when he was in Sheboygan trying to say we're going in the wrong direction. He was trying to articulate that position, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, so that means you're going to end up on personality issues. And you could see already in some of the campaign ads is they're both throwing mud at each other about corruption and being influenced, whether it be Casino, you know, Doyle and Casino, and then later on it's going to be Thompson, and, yeah. or whether it be, you know, Jack Abramoff or whomever. Well, you know. no, I know one. Uh, Nancy Musbaum, is she running for that uh, congressional seat? Green seat. Right. Green yeah. seat. Mm -hmm. She's campaigning against Bush, so yeah. Bush will be right in, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've seen several of her ads, and they, they mentioned. They I mentioned, saw one last night for the they, first time. I, I had to look up. President Bush, you know, so she's, she's right. campaigning Impressive. against President Bush. So. I mean, I, I don't know mm -hmm. if she makes it through the primary. Um, she's. Uh, I mean, that congressional race is very interesting, and because it's a congressional race, I think talking about national politics certainly makes sense. But she is facing two other pretty strong Democratic candidates in Plus that the primary. Plus Republicans got Guard running, right, amongst and, others. And, and Guard is running. I, I'm thinking Guard is not that strong. I mean, he certainly had a, a, a quick rise to the top in the, in the Wisconsin legislature, but I'm not sure on a in a uh, congressional campaign how well he plays. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he came to the legislature after you left. He was there, but he wasn't in a leadership position. Okay. But, I mean, well, he's been there a long time, and he's uh, okay. Rose, he looks young. It, uh, yeah. and, and, well, I, I don't know how much money he has, and I think that's the, many times the key to running for a national 
office such as that is you've got to have money for the TV time. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, having been in leadership along with Jensen and the other characters who mm -hmm. seem to do well <laughs> raising money in Madison, I don't know what he's got to, to transfer from his state coffer state committee to the congressional committee. You've got to think, though, the Republican National Committee is going to give him gobs of money. Oh, sure. Sure. I mean, because that's a, I mean, that's, it's, uh, compared to a lot of other congressional, you know, areas, this is somewhat a competitive race. Right. I think and, it's uh, in play. Yeah. And, I, um, I mean, nobody's talking about a Democratic takeover of the House, but if you're the Republican National Committee, you, you really are going to have to invest a good chunk of money in, in, that, sure. in that seat to sure. keep it in the Republican column, because mm. it only needs a swing of, what, eight or nine seats, I think, right now? Right. right. Yeah. Nine. No. Um, Nussbaum is interesting. I, um, she um, uh, spoke at a conference that I attended and just spoke, I thought, very eloquently about how she started out in politics. I believe she was the, I believe the mayor of De Pere before she became the Brown County Executive. And she talked about just going in De Pere from business to business and going in and talking to the owners of the businesses that, that she visited and um, talking about their needs and and she connected with people uh, and I think for women to win higher offices you know beyond say city council or school board races but, um, but you know power positions takes a uh, takes a nudge and uh, so I think she's working at it very hard um, so it'll be interesting and if it's a guard Nussbaum race uh, they say it's a competitive district although it's always seemed to me to be very conservative but well, it's been Republican ever since Father Cornell was right. defeated. That was well, Toby, quite a few years ago. Toby Roth? Mm -hmm. He was, was in there for many years. He was after very Cornell. conservative, yes. if, if I remember yes. correctly. And, uh, and Jay so. Johnson, the Democrat, he was a media personality, mm -hmm. Channel 11, I believe. He made a reasonably oh, respectable yeah. run in that seat mm -hmm. uh, against, was it Green? I believe it was Green. When Green first, I think when Green, I think yeah, they were both newcomers right. coming into that's that right. position. It was well, open seat. Yeah. Talking about money, um, the, uh, both of our state Senate uh, candidates have announced, or at least two have, I, I'm not sure there are going to be more, uh, Joe Leibham and uh, Jamie Aulick. Um, uh, Leibham is certainly an extremely well-established um, uh, politician, uh, um, uh, office holder. Uh, Jamie Aulick, I think, is uh, kind of an interesting, but I keep saying kid. Uh, he's 26, I believe, although Liveham is only 37, so we're, uh, we're talking about young people in, in any event. Uh, and you just wonder where the money will come from it, for Aulick to run any kind of race uh, against Liveham. Who well, we act. And it's, that's true. <laughs> we, okay, yeah. I mean, I, and his wife is a I've special... I've not been in the meetings, but I, <laughs> yeah. would, think, I would think. Well, his that wife we is a special uh, education uh, teacher in Manitowoc. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. so, um, but WEAC is not endlessly wealthy, or maybe it is. Well, they do a lot of polling. <laughs> <laughs> Awfully nice building. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there are three races usually they'll focus oh. on because that's you know, mm -hmm. trying to change the balance of power is what they're trying to do, even if by, by one vote. Mm -hmm. So they'll do their polling and find out whether there's a chance and they'll yeah. target their money. And so will the other interest groups, whether it's WMC or whoever it would happen to be, and that's where you get these multi-million dollar state senate races. I think the real challenge for, what's his first name? Uh, Jamie. First of all, name recognition to begin Jamie. with, number yeah. one. Uh, Jamie um, is uh, that the incumbent uh, is really very, very polished. Extremely. Uh, extremely polished, very articulate, um, personable. I mean, the times I've interacted with Senator Leibam, you know, we're always very, very civil and always very, very, you know, he's mm -hmm. not very confrontational. And he's um, a fine constituent. And he does constituent uh, services very, very, yeah. very, very well. Uh, and he spends a lot of time being very, pu very publicly visible at, you know, church picnics and all sorts of public events and making the rounds of nursing homes. I think I think I think he's going to have a real hard time um, meeting the resources that uh, that Joe's going to bring to this race. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to have a hard, I think he's going to because he's new at this process. It's going to be a pretty steep learning curve for him. I only had a telephone call in my answering machine from him, and he seems like a very earnest person and mm -hmm. a very sincere person. 
but there's going to have to be a certain amount of polish, and maybe that'll come in the campaign as time goes on. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's not a whole lot of time either. Right. Um, mm. Although, if we could only do the English model of six-week election cycles, or oh, well, <laughs> a lot better. Huh? <laughs> of course, I think they have more elections than we do, depending on when the uh, on when the uh, the elections get called. But uh, in any event, winning any election, I think, and particularly if you're going way uphill, which is what I think Alec is doing, is finding the issue and framing the issue. And I think that that is going to be, that's going to be somewhat difficult. But at least there's a candidate. Yep, we um, have a candidate. Republicans don't have a candidate yeah. against coal at this point. Yeah. Well, and it appears the Republicans don't have a candidate in the 26th Assembly District. Terry Van Akron has announced. Oh, that's and true. Really? Um, I have not heard well, of I'm anyone. Surprised. I have not heard of anyone running, and um, so it, uh, so that would be. Renee Susha. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, think I mean, because I mean, the last yeah. elections, I mean, Zempel was a. Uh, he was Zempel, very good. Right? Zempel did a real. I mean, he really worked the district. I know he stopped and pounded on my door. He's a former student of mine, and he was his first time around. And I thought he, did, he, he ran did a great a, campaign. He ran a, great ran a good campaign, and I thought he was very, very competitive. Mm -hmm. Very competitive. So that was a I'm 15? surprised the Republican yeah. Party has yet to. They're going to find somebody who's reasonably energetic. But July 11th is the um, the filing deadline, deadline, deadline. If wow. I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. So it's um, uh, it, and it's it, it is interesting. I mean that that Van Acker and Zempel um, matchup was a 55-45 percent. Now that's a very healthy win. But Zemo was brand new. Almost. Was, was brand, brand new. Brand new. Yep, and, never ran uh, before. and in a Democratic, presumably mostly Democratic district, um, although Leibham had come out of that district and uh, um, is certainly a very, very conservative Republican. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, to see if anybody comes up, comes up there. And um, so it promises to be a long campaign season and, uh, and one of great interest. Um, uh, just any any closing thoughts on the state of the state? I uh, um, well, I think Kim's observation that it's going to be a dirty gubernatorial campaign. I think it will be. I think just this whole issue on the Thompson situation, um, you could just see how it's being handled already. I mean, she's at this time we're airing is she's contending that her conviction was really based on insufficient evidence and she's she's appealing to the court for that point of view and so you know here's it somebody It did seem to be insufficient. Well she I was she came out of the Thompson administration she wasn't even a Doyle direct <laughs> appointee you know and she had a lot of leeway in making such decisions and so maybe indeed she uh, made a decision on her own and really got caught in the in the fan here, yeah. and uh, but yeah. she's going to be taken for a ride all the way through yeah. this campaign, I'm afraid. Well, yeah. we'll check in from time to time. Yeah. Thanks. It's been a great discussion.